nobody needs to worry about me. This is one of those things, you know, when you're an athlete, you're always trying to push it to get to the pain, you know? No game without pain. But uh, this is one that you want to push it, but not to the pain. So I'm trying to adjust to that. How hard is it for you to come here and uh, not play around the golf? Uh, I love playing golf, but, you know, I like also to support the event. Um, so, you know, I got mixed emotions about it, but I'm just glad to be here. Are you surprised how quickly you're recovering, faster than the eight weeks? Um, yeah, but, you know, like I say, tell the players all the time, they don't make them like they used to, and there's not very many of us left. So, you know, I wouldn't expect them to be able to recover this fast, but it is what it is. When do you expect to be back on the course? Uh, I don't know. I'm chipping and putting, and you know, I'll probably start taking half swings here pretty soon, but uh, I think six weeks is probably a reasonable amount of time. So a few more weeks. Do you think you hop in right back into our two days after church and kind of motivated the players too? Well, you know, look, I lasted for six hours and it didn't really have anything to do with the players. You know, I sat at home for six hours in a chair. Miss Terry took the dogs to the lake and then I was walking around out the yard. When she got back, she said, you know, I'm going to call the doctor or the police one or the other on you if you don't get back in the house. So I just don't sit still well. Is that hard for, the, for you to, to sit still? Are people having to teach you from moving too much, doing too much activity? Yeah, but, you know, the rehab has been great. You know, we have a great medical staff, so those guys have really done a nice job with me, and I appreciate their efforts, and it's, it's going really good. How hard do they push you through that rehab? Uh, I think, like what I said before, you know, they push you, as, but they don't really want to push you into something that's going to hurt you. So um, they, they've done a really nice job so far. Balance and range of motion is the biggest thing that you're working on. And the balance part, that's why I was able to walk, you know, in a, in a day afterwards. It's, that wasn't an issue, so I didn't need a walker and I didn't need a cane, which probably helps, you know, the rehab. As, as soon as you get the muscles going, you got a better chance to sort of respond. So it's been good. Are you able to focus on other things? Yeah, I focus on work. You know, I work all the time in golf that much of the time. So, uh, you know, recruiting is a big thing that's going on right now. Evaluations of the spring, next year's opponents. Um, you know, it's actually given me a little bit more time to do some of those things because I, I can't, you know, really go out and play golf or do anything else. Nick, I know players are fueled, you know, when people doubt them. When people suggest that Clemson's kind of overtaken Alabama, uh, does that motivate you as well to get back on top? Well, you know, I think every year is a new year. Uh, you know, we, we, I think we learned a lot uh, from last year and how the season ended. Um, and I think the players have responded really well to it. And you know, Clemson's got a great program and a good coach and lots of good players. And, I think we have a good program and lots of good players, and uh, I think that you know, the key to the drill is trying to develop those players so they can play at a high level and be able to sustain it throughout the season. You know, we had a tough road to hoe to get to the championship game, and just didn't finish like we wanted to. And uh, I think there's a lot of good things that we can learn from that. Coach, you said Bama faster soon after that game. First time you spoke, you used those, that phrase, and now it's kind of all over social media. It's something your players have adopted. What is the Bama factor? Uh, just a team that plays with a lot of discipline. Um, players go out and take responsibility and ownership for doing their job at a high level and a high standard, and everybody puts the team first. And, um, that's, that's the kind of program that we've always had. That's the kind of team that we've always had. That's what we try to get the players to buy into, and uh, that's what we're going to continue to do. So you know, last year, at the end of the year, um, you know, I, I felt like maybe we lost our humility a little bit. Didn't really prepare and practice like we needed to, develop some bad habits, and eventually got exposed by you know, a pretty good team. A couple more, one more. Nick, just, this is almost a full year of the, of the transfer model, the new transfer model. Just how has that affected the game and what you do uh, moving forward? How might you change it? Well, you know, I, look, whatever the rules are, that's what we have to live with. So, um, you know, we're just hopeful that we do a good job for our players and that they stay committed to our program and doing the things they need to do to be successful. And um, hopefully we're not, you know, putting the decision making in uh, the wrong people's hands, you know, too much. And I think commitments are important um, to 
being successful, whether you commit to a process uh, that's going to help you do the things that you want to do to accomplish the vision that you have and have the discipline to execute it. And sometimes those things are tough. And I think if we make it to where, you know, guys have an easy way out, that that's not always going to be the best benefit for them. And it's all about the players, man. Everything's about the players. What, what's best for the player to have a better chance to be successful in life? And uh, I think that that's how we should look at it. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Coach.